Hi guys, Ross here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the new thin film settings in Cinema 4D and Redshift. We're going to go over a few ways to use this such as a metal material, plastic material, but also how we can use it for a air bubble, like a soapy kind of bubble. I actually did a previous video about this, but I think this new way is going to be much easier. So less of the waffling, let's just jump straight into the video. So in Cinema 4D, I've just got this simple shadable setup here. Um, and you can see the bubbles and kind of the thin film already in action. Uh, so let's just strip it straight back and go from scratch. So I'm going to delete these materials. And now we just have our clay shadable. So the way you're going to set up the thin film is you're going to go to create redshift materials and a standard material. This is going to give us the new features from the new Redshift update such as the thin film but also the improved subsurface scattering which I will cover in a different video. So usually when you create a Redshift standard material you're going to be working with the new node editor but I actually have a layout saved which always has my shader graph docked here and for some reason it just kept it with the old node editor so I will actually drop this layout in the description below um, and that way you can kind of prevent yourself from having to go through the new node editor. Okay, so let's apply this material to our shadable. Let's have a look at this, uh, we'll just hit play. And by default, yep, we're just gonna get our lovely kind of plastic material. So let's just dive straight into how to set up this thin film. I'm actually gonna change our base color to a black, change this to a metal material. And now we've just got a completely black material. And this is for the sake of allowing us to see the thin film clearer. So now if we scroll down, you're gonna see this thin film option here. And it's set to an IOR of 1.5 by default, which is the same as your reflection. So that's all good. And we're just gonna increase this thickness. And you're gonna see straight away as we start to increase this, we start to introduce all these different colors. Kind of, we're on like a rainbow spectrum at the moment. And the more you increase it, kind of the more colors you're going to get, but also they're going to become more pastel like. Um, and then, kind of around the midpoint, I'd say, is where it's at its strongest. And then anything less than that, you're kind of again getting these uh, just goldy, silvery kind of colors. Um, so, yeah, I'd say around the midpoint is the strongest, and then it starts to taper off after that. But you can see how this is working. We're getting this rainbow gradient come through. And people have been replicating this similar effect in the past using fall offs and fresnels. But now we have it built straight into Redshift and it just makes it a lot more intuitive. So we have this kind of rainbowy color. Um, and like I said, the IOR is set to 1.5 by default. But if we start to adjust this, we can actually get some quite interesting effects. So this is going to work kind of like how your reflection does where um, the higher you go, the brighter it's going to be. But also instead of getting a whole spectrum of colors, you're just going to get like a singular color. So you can see now as I scroll through, I'm only getting usually one or two colors at a time. So depending on the kind of looks you want, you want to go for, this can be really powerful. So like at the moment, we're getting this kind of rose gold finish, which actually is quite nice. Um, but you could slide this down and we can get like a goldy material like so. Um, this is more yeah, like a pink goldish kind of color. So this IOR is really powerful in affecting that. On the other hand, we could actually go below one. And now it's almost going to create this outline effect here where the reflections actually are starting closer towards the center. So you can see the more I bring this down, the further away from the edge that the reflection and the thin film is appearing. So you can create some really cool effects by playing with a slider. Usually I'm going to keep this above one. But yeah, just if you move this slide around, you can kind of see how that's affecting it. So I'm going to keep this at something like 1.5. So just back to the default. And then let's try to find a nice color to work with. So maybe something kind of like this, where we have this bluish purple color. And this is looking wicked. So say you didn't want a metal material, you wanted more of a plastic material. All we're going to do is just change our base color back to like a grayish color. So say 74 turn that metalness down and you're going to see that the thin film is now really hard to see so what you're probably going to have to do is bump up the IOR slightly so let's try something like 2.2 and now we can creep back in some of that color and now we just have like a really nice subtle plastic material with that color variation as well so I played with some figures earlier and I think I used something like 2.2 and 385 I think. Okay, I just checked, I lied, it's 240. 
and then I used an IOR of 2.5 just to boost that slightly. So here we have a really cool like blue purpley color but now it's mixed in with a plastic and what I would actually do in this case is I would actually turn the roughness up of our reflection to something like 0.6 and what it's actually going to do is it's going to smooth our thin film out across our object more so it's going to distribute our thin film and then we can add that reflection back in using the coat. So if we just turn that coat on, that basically adds a secondary reflection. And then we can turn this to like 0.1 and then maybe like bring it back down to like 0.7. So now we have this smooth thin film across our whole object. And then we also have those nice shiny reflections. So we have a really cool thin film plastic material and it just looks great. And this is gonna be so useful for creating cool iridescent materials in the future. When I've dived into it more, I'll make a video on that for sure. So as a bonus, I want to talk about how we can make a nice soapy bubble material. So I'm just going to enable the bubbles and you can see I've already got the material on there. Uh, this is made just using a cloner with a sphere, which I've then put into a volume builder and a volume mesher, which essentially is just kind of merging some of these soap bubbles together and then a random and a push apart effector just to kind of add some randomization and just make sure none of them are intersecting. If you don't want to go through this setup yourself, I am going to put this project file online. You can download it for free. For free, I'm giving away this project file. So yeah, it's on me. Christmas came early, baby. Okay, so let's rebuild this bubble material from scratch. So I'm just gonna delete this material quick. And now we have our bubbles with our lovely clay material on there. So let's just go to create redshift materials and standard and let's drop this onto our volume mesher. So this is gonna go back to that plastic material we're all familiar with. And let's have a look inside the material. So we're gonna disable the base because we don't want any color to this. We want this to be a refractive material and the way we can do that is just enabling the transmission. So if you're familiar with Redshift previously, it was called refraction, now it's called transmission. So it's pretty much the same setup. A few things have changed slightly, such as now you don't have the option to separate the link to the reflection. It's always gonna be linked to the reflection, but you also have this extra roughness tab. I'm gonna cover this in a separate video, but it's just good to be aware of it. So we've enabled the transmission, we've got our reflections. At the moment, the bubbles are looking too similar to glass. So all we need to do is go down to the very bottom and under this geometry tab, just enable thin walled. This is gonna do what's always done, essentially takes out the refraction and treats it as geometry without any thickness. So yeah, it's taken out that refraction and they already look like bubbles. So I'm gonna drop this IOR down to 1.3, which is again, it's just gonna get us closer to that realism of bubbles. You know, they're closer to like a watery kind of material, so they're gonna have less reflection. Uh, so just drop that IOR down. And I'm gonna leave the roughness at 0.2, just so we get some nice soft highlights. But what I'm actually gonna do is go down to the coat, enable this, and keep the roughness at zero. So that's gonna add that secondary reflection. So now they just stand out a bit more. And the final piece of the puzzle for this is to add the thin film. Now I played with some numbers and some values and I found that a IOR of 1.52 and a thickness of 380 worked pretty well. And what I'm actually gonna do is just remove the material from the shadable just so we can see it a little bit clearer without getting kind of distracted with the colors from that. Um, and again, we'll just let this render out for a second. But now we have that kind of bluish purple tint to the to the bubbles. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna drop this project file down below. So go ahead, go download it, get the shader wall, get the light setup, get the materials. Um, there's the metal material and the plastic material as well as the bubble materials, which we've covered in today's video. So yeah, these are looking great now. And this is a much easier setup than what I've done previously. I actually have a previous video on how to make soapy bubbles but this method is much easier because the thin film shader is now built in. So I think that is everything from today's video. If you did enjoy it, if you did find the video helpful, I would really, really, really appreciate it if you dropped a like, a comment, and a subscribe, and finally hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future content. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below if you are excited about this Redshift update, if you have any questions, or if there's anything you would like me to cover with this new update. Thanks again for watching guys, until next time, peace.